Okay, in this video we're going to pick up where we left off with the last video and we're going to talk about surface water. Now just a real quick review, so we've talked about groundwater up to this point. We said that groundwater is the water that is down in the ground beneath the surface. Uh, it is where the ground is uh, saturated, okay, full of water. Water percolates down, fills up the ground, becomes saturated. And that line between the area of saturation and the dry area is called the water table. Okay, and then uh, flooding occurs whenever the ground becomes so saturated with water it can't hold any more water. Therefore, all the water has to run off and runs off in creeks and rivers, and the creeks and rivers overflow. Um, different types of ways we get water out of the ground. One was an aquifer where we have these uh, pockets of water below, these large, huge pockets of water below the ground that we drill down to and, and pump the water out. And then also we have uh, a well, okay? So a well is a hole that is dug also down into the ground, but instead of accessing a pocket of water, it simply goes down to the ground into the water table. We find that area of saturated ground where the, the ground with the soil particles and rock particles have water all between them. Okay, so now talking about surface water. Surface water in its name would imply is water that is on the surface, okay? So surface water. That's water that collects on the surface. So we have uh, rain or precipitation, uh, snow, rain comes down. It's the water that does not get absorbed into the ground. It's the water that collects on the surface. And we find the, that collection to be lakes, rivers, streams, oceans, okay, wetlands, swamps, all those areas where we find water on top of the ground. Okay, and we call that surface water. All right, so surface water. Um, surface water occurs when we have rain, okay, so rain comes down, and then you have runoff, okay, runoff is the, the rainwater that hits the ground, it's not absorbed into the ground, and that it runs off, okay, it's water that goes down the, you know, down the sidewalk, down the street, down to the, the sewer, okay, a lot of that water runs off, if it's not run down on concrete areas, it's running in the ground, it's running into creeks, those creeks go into bigger creeks, those creeks go into rivers, uh, and so forth. Um, part of our erosion factor is that whenever we have runoff, a lot of times that runoff can carry sediment, okay, sediment would be, sediment right here includes boulders, rocks, gravel, soil, silt, okay, clay, um, so a lot of erosion occurs whenever we, we have runoff, okay? We have water that's, that's carrying um, soil and, and rocks and sand away whenever it hits the ground and percolate, or goes along the, the surface ground. Runoff can be very powerful, okay? If there's a lot of water, um, it can, runoff can move water and it can it move big objects, okay? Soil, rocks, okay? Man-made objects, cars. It can be very powerful, so just depending upon the amount of runoff that there is. All right, so uh, erosion occurs, as we said, whenever we have runoff, and it's taking sediment, okay? So erosion uh, moves sediment, rocks, and other things, okay? The larger the sediment, obviously the more force is required. Um, it's gonna take a whole lot more water force to move a big rock than is a little piece of sand, obviously. Uh, less force is required to move smaller sediments, slow moving streams and so forth. Okay, but we get a lot of erosion from runoff, from surface water moving, uh, eroding out our creeks, our rivers and, and land and so forth. Okay, so here is a picture of erosion and, and surface water runoff. And what you can see by this is you have the, the, the creek curving around here, but right here in this bank, Okay, in this bank area, you can see how uh, it's eroded. The, the water is rushing against, okay, the water is rushing against the side of this bank and it's pushing, and as it continues to push, it'll continue to erode, okay, that bank out, okay? So a lot of our creeks and rivers are constantly changing by this erosion that occurs when that moving water rubs up against that bank and picks up that soil and picks up that rock. Okay, uh, so we have erosion where we have the, the, the rivers and the creeks picking up soil and moving it, okay, but we also have deposition. 
Okay, and deposition, and we've talked about this before in deposition, but deltas, for example, that's where soil and silt is deposited at the mouth of a river, um, where a river empties into the ocean. Okay, and that's a delta. So we have the, the soil and the silt is picked up and is moved by the water, and it's got to be dumped off someplace, and we call that deposition. Okay, um, so let's look at that. Okay, so here is two different pictures of the Mississippi Delta. And we'll go back real quick just in case you didn't get that. Remember that a delta, okay, a delta is where soil is deposited, okay. Um, usually as a river empties into, as a river empties into an ocean, okay. Um, so here are two different pictures of a delta. So here we have the Mississippi Delta, okay? Uh, this area right here is really what we're looking at, okay? So we have the Mississippi River that is snaking down through here, okay? And down here would be the Gulf of Mexico. And we have all of this soil and silt that has been picked up by the Mississippi River is dropped off as it enters into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, a different view of this one is right here. You have this, it look, kind of looks like a tree looking structure, but what happens is we have the Mississippi River that's going down through here, and as the water is dumped from the Mississippi River into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, all of that sand and silt is, is dropped off. And over time, it builds up and actually creates landforms, and then because we have all this green, you have grasses and trees that start to grow on this, this land that is created by the river dumping off the soil that is collected all the way down through its, the water's journey. All right, so although erosion is a natural process, okay, we as humans a lot of times increase erosion. So although erosion is a natural process, we as humans increase the, uh, the erosion process we kind of help surface water. We kind of help surface water do its erosional effect. Okay, um, one of those processes is called clear cutting. When we clear land, we uh, help erosion. Okay, um, trees and plants are big, big factors in keeping land intact. Um, you have grass in your yard because if you didn't have grass in your yard, all of the soil would just wash away. Okay, uh, so trees and roots keep soil together. They keep it where it should be. And when we take plants away, we essentially take the things that would hold the soil in place away. So looking at that, I'll give you a couple examples of clear cutting. Okay, so here is a mountainside in which they have taken the trees and they've cut down the trees for whatever purpose, to, you know, to use for lumber to make houses or paper. And they've taken this mountainside and they've completely taken all the trees off the mountainside. Okay, so we've got uh, the trees gone. So since there's no trees, there's essentially nothing holding the soil in place. So you see these darker areas right here, okay? And that's where we have that uh, erosion happening. There's nothing holding the soil in place. There's no roots. Therefore, all of the, the soil is washing down the mountainside. And if you look closely down here at this picture, you see this river and it looks very, very muddy. Okay, because all that soil is washing down into this river, okay, down here at the base of this, this mountainside. So that uh, is a human uh, effect on erosion. Okay, <clears throat> so as we said, vegetation, okay, vegetation is a big process of keeping vegetation, being plants and trees, keeping things in place. They hold the soil together. Okay, vegetation can slow down water and uh, it can get in the way of moving water. It can slow down water running off and get in the way of moving water. Um, and also vegetation, and we're going to talk about this here in just a minute, uh, helps remove a lot of contaminants. So uh, those plants actually soak up a lot of the contaminants in the, the water and remove those contaminants for us and for other animals and for other plants. Okay. So vegetation is very important. Plants are very important to limit erosion and to slow down surface water and runoff in this whole process. 
Okay, now the last thing we're going to talk about is watershed, and we'll get to watershed in our next video. So for whatever reason you didn't quite get all of these, go back, rewind, pick up the, the blanks that you need to fill out, and so forth. And we'll pick up watershed with the next video.